All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Now this book came out some two, three, four years ago. I don't recall. I've seen it in the bookstores every time I go there. Very, very popular book. Um, I thought I'd get it and read it and see what I thought and then leave a review if I liked the book. Well, clearly I liked the book because I'm leaving a review. I only give positive reviews on this channel. So let's talk about it. It's a big ass book. I mean, and let's just start from the uh, most obvious thing is this striking, super hella dope cover by a illustrator named Ivan Belikov. Um, and it is just really, really super cool. I think this is probably one of the best covers to come out in a long time. It's got the nice wraparound look to it with designs. It's colorful. It's eye-catching. It's eye-popping. The illustration is really well done. So we got to give the publisher a um, high marks for just giving us a great book to hold in our hands. And like I said, this is big. This is epic, epic high fantasy. Um, it's got maps. So we've got maps throughout. Great maps. So we can see where we are. Very detailed maps. It's got drawings. It's got a lot of maps, a lot of drawings like this. So it's just an elegant book to have in your collection. All things considered. Um, so what is this? I, I mean, I really like this. Um, so the writing, just initially, within the first couple hundred pages, I was like, the writing really reminded me of the old 19... Late 80s, 1990s fantasy novels published by Daw Books that were written by specifically female writers. And, and so I wanted to make this comparison because I think it's apropos. Um, I really compared what Shan Samantha Shannon was doing with her world building, her writing style, and just her, her uh, eloquent prose with um, some of these uh, 90s female writers that I like, Mickey... Um, Zucker Reichart, you know, C.S. Friedman, Kate Elliott, Jennifer Robertson, Melanie Ron, Michelle West. You know, these are writers that I was following really heavily in the 1990s. And Da Books published all of these female writers, and they were some of my favorites growing up. And I think had Samantha Shannon submitted this book to publishers back in the 1990s, if we had a Wayback Machine, she would have fit right in with all of these. And the reason I bring that up is because this is kind of marketed as like a feminist fantasy, uh, sort of an LGBTQ slash feminist fantasy. And I was reading it, I was like, I didn't... I mean, yeah, there were LGBTQ um, characters, and a lot of our main characters were female, but I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was being bludgeoned over the head with any sort of message at all, so I'm not really sure why it was marketed so heavily as being these things, because it's just a super, super dope story with a lot of action. I mean, the tone, the story, the tone, the prose, the pacing, it was just fleshed out um, very complex, the religion, the knights, the saints, all of that really blended together just with a really super dope, um, action packed stories with a lot of magical characters, magic users, dragons. It just was a fantasy book, a big epic fantasy that fit right in the same category as all these other epic fantasies that I've been reading over the many years written by female authors that I love, I just absolutely adored this book. Had I read it in the 90s, it would have been like one of my favorite fantasies of all time. Reading it now, it's still a really, 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 really good fantasy. Um, 
So let's talk about it. Uh, so we've got a big fantasy world, a big epic high fantasy world with all the trappings, all the great cool things we love, dragons, world building, magic users, um, knights in shining armor, religious discussions, um, saints, and um, all of that world building that is so that we all crave when we pick up a, I mean, if it's a big book like this, it's better to have world building, and this has it in spades. So, first of all, we've got a character that we're introduced named Tane. It's T-A-N-E, not sure how you pronounce it. But she's training to be a dragon rider. Our other, one of our other main characters is Eid. I pronounced it Eid, it's E-A-D. Now she lives kind of across the ocean, in, in the realm across the ocean in a city of Ascalon. Um, she's a lady in waiting to the Queen Sabran. Now Sabran is one of our other main characters. And now uh, this Eid, who's the lady in waiting, and she's kind of more than just a lady in waiting. She's kind of a badass. Because we open up the scene that we see her, she kind of um, saves the queen from an assassination attempt by a cutthroat. And uh, so she's kind of got a little bit of badassery to her, even though she's a lady in waiting. And then the fourth kind of main character we uh, follow around is a character named Loth, L-O-T-H. But we sort of follow these four characters through this landscape, this big massive landscape, this fantasy landscape that covers a lot of ground. And um, we just get to know the characters. It's very kind of like House of Dragon ish in that the queen sort of has a bodyguard there's sort of a love triangle kind of going on um if you want i mean it just reminded me of house of dragons because i just watched that and i remember the queen having a, an affair with the body i think both queens had an affair with the bodyguard but anyway i think it was the same bodyguard too anyway that kind of stuff happens in here there's a lot of melodrama there's a lot of soap opera stuff kind of intermingled with the action and the cool fantasy stuff we've got going on. There's a lot of assassination kind of stuff. There's a lot of dragon riders. One of the things I thought we were going to get with the Tane character was, so she's in training to be a dragon rider. I thought we would get like, kind of like a Harry Potter-esque um, dragon riding training school sort of feel to most of the book, but that was all sort of, um, kind of in the background to a lot of the other things that were going on. Um, there's, um, like I said, a lot of dragons. Dragons of many kinds, including a nameless dragon. Um, so there's, characters have a love, kind of hate relationship with the dragons. Some of the, some of the people on one side of the world love the dragons. Other people think that the, the other people on the other side of the world think the dragons are evil. And of Satan or whatever, you know, they're, uh, uh, there's good and evil worship. Some of them worship dragons. Some of them hate the dragons. Um, so we've got this clash of uh, cultures and ideals and religions and characters. And it all just blends together in a, just a super dope epic fantasy. Now, I hear this as a standalone. However, I do know that there's another big book that just came out by Samantha Shannon, which with a similar kind of cover design. And I, I, I don't know if... That book, and I don't even know what the name of it is. I just saw it in the bookstore. But I don't know if that's a sequel, prequel, not even related to this world. But it's about the same size, and it looks just as cool. So I'm probably, based off of what I thought of this book, which I really liked, I'm probably going to get that book too and read it soon. But for The Priory of the Orange Tree, a book that I've been putting off reading for many years and probably should have read when it first came out, because it's really good. I give this a solid, solid nine stars out of 10. I think if you like fantasy, you are going to love this book. Um, whoever you are, man, woman, feminist, LGBTQ, I think it works for everybody. 